Wherever there's a life to save, they're on the job. And members of a New York City rescue unit were among the first to reach into the rubble of Oklahoma City and at the World Trade Center bombing. And over the last four months, they've given prime time extraordinary access. And tonight, correspondent Jay Shadler rides with them to the rescue. Rescue the 290, bring your line in here. The greatest danger that we have is to allow the fire to get too far ahead of us where we can no longer control it. Now it's controlling us. It's like fighting an enemy. If firemen are soldiers in a war that never ends, then these are the Green Berets of New York firefighting. No matter how hot it is, no matter how black it is, no matter how bad it is, they bounce back. Some places there'll be one or two good firemen, but here it's 25 of the best. These are the men of Rescue 2, an elite brigade of the city's most experienced and versatile firemen, called from the top ranks of New York's engine and ladder companies. With a battery of small cameras inside the engine, on top of the cab, even on the coats of the firemen themselves, we're going to give you a glimpse into their world. The world of firefighters like Timmy Higgins, Louis Valentino, and 23-year veteran Lieutenant Pete Lund. Why does someone choose to put their life on the line? I guess it is insane. Rescue 2 may be the busiest firefighting company in the world. Last year alone, the bell rang at their century-old firehouse more than 3,000 times. And 3,000 times, this five-ton toolbox they call a fire engine rolled into the streets of Brooklyn with a six-man rescue team on board. Immediately, the adrenaline rush starts. The whole thing is set in motion. We're all listening to the radio, trying to hear what we're going into. Uh, is, it a, is it a fire? Is it a special job? You're trying to, to come up with some sort of a game plan before you get there. It's after midnight. Rescue 2 responds to a two-alarm house fire. One of our cameras, strapped to a fireman's turnout coat, captures the first furious moments as the company fights its way into the fire to help a fellow firefighter in trouble. Back out, back out, back out! Be careful, guys! He's okay. With the firemen safe, Rescue 2 pulls back. For the next hour, they'll stay here to help contain the blaze. But later that same day, it all begins again. Hey, Tim, what, what do we got here, basically? What do you know? Sounds like they got real frames. Fire the first floor, real frames. This time, a fire's broken out on the first floor of a row house. Rescue 2's immediate job is to back up the firemen already here and to act as a sort of scouting party for the fire chief on the scene. Excuse me, buddy. Let me get past you up the stairs. When you can't see anything, how do you negotiate inside that house? Everything's by feel. You learn to feel things and know what they are. Beds, bicycles, garbage cans, you know, chairs, uh... That's how you remember what room you're in. They may not be able to see their enemy, but in this aging section of Brooklyn, they know it can be hiding in every wall. Yeah, we're gonna fly on the second floor. We need a line up here. The fire spread so rapidly in these frame buildings. Probably some of them are around 100 years old now. This is a place that loves fire in a way, isn't it? Yeah, it eats it up. It is in that place where firefighters put their lives in the hands of their brothers that a tradition of teamwork evolves. 
you're brought up as an apprentice and you, and you learn from the older guys and, and you see a tremendous amount of dedication and, and love for the job and it, and it kind of just rubs off. After a while, it, you become part of that. That bond is forged in smoke and fire. In moments like this, when Rescue 2 helped bring a fellow firefighter to safety after he fell to carbon monoxide fumes. And at times like these, when lives are threatened and firefighters are there to answer their highest calling. What is that like, to save a life? I can go back to the first rescue I made in 1982. It felt like I was carrying my own son. Tonight, Pete Lund and Rescue 2 are part of a return engagement at that same Brooklyn Row House fire they helped put out just a half hour ago. You got water coming? Yeah. But through rekindling or the work of an arsonist, the fire is raging again and threatening the apartments next door. We're in the apartment right next to where the fire is. If you come in here, bring the camera out through here, you're gonna be able to see. That's the second story where Tim was just a few minutes ago. That sound you hear is the saw. They're trying to vent the roof. The first building is already a loss. We want you out. Are you kidding me or not? Nice. Now the objective is to keep the blaze from moving into the ceiling area that joins the other occupied buildings. Timmy Higgins works in a rain of fire. Get that line up here, buddies. Once fire gets up into that area, it spreads horizontally. So what Timmy was doing was pulling the entire ceiling down and exposing that so that we could get in there with our hand lines and drive it back towards that vacant building. The strategy works. The fire dies. I reached Timmy Higgins for a street side post mortem. Tell me about that. Oh, they probably torched the joint again after everybody left. That happens down here, you know? Doesn't that just madden you that you have to go back there for a fire like that? It was completely set, obviously, and, and potentially at the risk of your own lives. Well, if you start getting mad at all the reasons why people set fires, you'd, get, you'd really be getting annoyed all the time, you know? Those sentiments are shared by most firefighters, including Louis Valentino, who we met during our first days on this story. Woodruff is just past uh, Parkside, right off of Flatbush Avenue. As an 11-year veteran trained for the most dangerous assignments, he cut the perfect profile last year for a magazine cover story on Rescue 2. Three months ago, Louis and Rescue 2 responded to a routine fire call at an auto body shop. A sudden noise told them they were in trouble. It was a sickening sound. It was a sound that I was just familiar with. It was the, the rumbling of the beams, the cinder block coming down around us, and I knew exactly what it was. I dove for the corner for the wall. A steel beam had given way, and the firemen of Rescue 2 were suddenly searching for one of their own. When Pete found fellow firefighter Terry Coyle, he knew the news was not good. Terry looked at me and said, it's Louie. Every once in a while, just once in a while, there's a shining star. Louie's Rescue 2's shining star. So long, buddy. Thank you for showing us the way. I'm sure we'll meet again. In Rescue 2's long history, Louie was only the second firefighter to lose his life in the line of duty. One of the best, man. One of the best. And the best never Start stop working. In a, in a flat. We gotta run. Pardon? Gotta run. Certainly yeah. not for a television interview. What is this? I don't know. We'll know in a minute. For the 72nd time this week, for the 992nd time this year, the bell sounds and Rescue 2 rolls. Every day that you come to work after you have 20 years and you feel like you're, you're cheating the odds. But then I think about the quality of the people that I work with here. And if this isn't the best security blanket in the world, there is none. These are the best. Lieutenant Pete Lund and firefighter Tim Higgins will be presented with medals of bravery on June 5th. Louis Valentino will be honored posthumously. We want to thank the New York City Fire Department for their help with this story. Thank you.